Inspections, inspections, inspections. There are so many inspections along the way. Let's dive into it. One of the first things you do before you'd even do an inspection is you do a prelim. You could go to the council and you say, hey, I'm gonna build this and this is how I think I'm gonna build it. If I submit plans that say X, Y, Z, what do you think will go wrong? It's a really good idea if you've got a gnarly section. I personally found my local council really positive to deal with and they gave me the answers I needed and talked about the potential roadblocks that they would face consenting my job and that helped us at design phase get ahead of the game. Right, so let's assume you've done your prelim and you have then submitted consent and you've got the green light. Boom, it's been stamped. What's next? One of the first inspections you'll have is what's called a sighting inspection. A sighting inspection is when they check that you're going to put the building in the right place. You get a surveyor to come and mark either the four corners or put some offset pegs in. We then put up string lines and we use those string lines to mark out the perimeter of the building. We also add a sighting inspection, show the inspector that we've got the right height and we also show the inspector that we've got the right size. It's really crazy to think that one of the first things we use as builders is string. Quick disclaimer, not all of these inspections will apply to your build. The council will tell you at building consent phase which inspections they believe you need. These inspections are stages of the build where we have to wait and get the work that we've done cited and signed off, often because the next thing we do will cover up the thing that they want to see. 99% of the time, the inspection is done in person by a building officer from your local council. I think it's also important to say that I don't believe the system is the right way or the only way. I definitely think it could be tweaked. I'm just communicating to you the system as it is and how we navigate it. So let's dive into this list. Drainage is you dig a trench, you put the drain pipes in, you put the P-meter in. The inspector wants to see the pipes, so you normally only cover them halfway. They also want to see that the pipes are holding water. So what we normally do is seal both ends of the pipe before it's connected to the mains. Now you also want to prove to the inspector that you know that you're connecting stormwater to stormwater and sewage to sewage. It's not really that fun when you get them the other way around. <laughs> So we do what's called subfloor drainage. Someone commented on the townhouse video, why are we digging up all those pipes and doing that and then laying that, that's subfloor drainage. We dig that in and that gets checked before we can do any slab work. Then we'll do a pre-pour floor inspection. These days what the inspector wants to see is the polythene and if the steel work is part of the building consent, then he or she will check that off. But if it's signed off by the engineer, they just want to know that the engineer has come and cited all the steel work. In 90% of our jobs, if not more, we are getting an engineer to design our foundations. We've poured a slab, now we stand our frames and we put our roof trusses on. Then we do what's called a pre-wrap. So the pre-wrap, at a roof level, you want to see the purlin screws and the roof brace elements. And at a framing level, you want to see all of the brackets, knuckle plates, your Z nails, and all of that kind of stuff. So now we've wrapped the building and we've most likely got a roof on and now we can do a pre-clad. So a pre-clad is exactly what it means. We show them that the building is ready to put cladding on. At this stage, they will want to see cavity patterns in place. They will want to see a vented vermin strip along the bottom. Ideally, our windows will be in and then we'll show them the flashings, the head flashings above the windows, sill flashings if it's direct fix. We will show them that they're taped correctly, they've got their stop ends in place. Now, if we don't have the windows, if there's a 12 week delay at the window factory and the boys are ready to start cladding, we can do what's called a pre-wrap to head height. When we finally get the windows, we put the windows in, we put the head flashing in, we tape that up and then we get them back for a second pre-wrap. That's one way around keeping the job moving. Now that does cost extra to get a second inspection. The cost of the initial inspections is part of what makes up your building consent fee. One more important thing to note is that it doesn't cost anything for you to go ahead and click the subscribe button. We're on the road to 10K. If you could do that, that would be awesome. If we're cladding in brick, we will also do what's called a half high brick inspection. Now what they're doing there is they're viewing the cavity behind the brick, looking for the brick ties in particular, looking for the drainage elements of the brick. Basically, they want to make sure that your brick's being done correctly before you go all the way up and hide all that good brick stuff behind the walls. 
Then we do what's called a post clad or weather type. Now this is a reasonably new inspection. I think by reasonably new I mean like in the last five years ish. Technically you need to do a post clad or a weather type before you apply any coatings to the external cladding system. So they're basically making sure that have you installed all of the cladding system correctly? But depending on your council, often we do the weather type when the house is painted and it's got all of its feet beads and all of that stuff in. Actually, some people prefer that it's painted because technically most cladding products need to be sealed. So it's kind of a conundrum. Do you fill all the holes and seal it and show them that it's now officially watertight or do you not fill the holes and show them that it's been nailed off correctly but it still needs to get sealed? Now we move inside. We do what's called a pre-line plumbing. So pre-line plumbing is all the plumbing pipes in the wall. Uh, and what happens is the plumber has a little box, he jacks up the pressure in the pipes, he seals off the system. So right now all the pipes in the wall are isolated from the water mains and he's showing the building inspector that under pressure there are no leaks, all of the joints are properly sealed. And this is really important because as we crack on, we then put jib on the walls and all those pipes get hidden. So Pre-line plumbing is all about showing that all of your plumbing pipes have been installed correctly. Now usually the plumber organises this direct, it's just something we need to work together for. One other example of the pre-line plumbing affecting building would be if the plumber's gone and drilled through a bunch of studs in a load bearing wall, they'll want to make sure that they're the appropriate measures are in place like straps and brackets. Right, so then we do a pre-line building, so this is like making sure that the frames are tied to the studs. They'll check the insulation. Is the insulation installed properly? Is there no air gaps? They'll basically inspect anything framing wise that they're not going to be able to see. They'll inspect around the windows. Have you done your PEF rod and your foam? They will look at all of those things that you won't see later on. Basically when you put the jib on because you can't see through jib. I don't know if you can, but I can't. Then we do a post line. So this is where we're like, boom, boom, boom. We've got back to back inspections. And normally you'd book them at the same time. You'd be like, right, pre lines on this day and I'm gonna take six days to jib. So I'm gonna put post line on this day. The post line inspection is all about making sure the jib has been installed properly. And what they're really looking at is the bracing elements. And by that, I mean, in a lot of houses, including ours, you screw off the jib at a predetermined pattern. Now, this has all been worked out by people way smarter than me about, like, if I put 150 million screws in a piece of jib, it's going to stop the house going from side to side. The inspector needs to see that before we do plaster and paint. It's another point in the chain where the job stops while we're waiting on an inspector. Someone asked me this week, can the plasterer start while the upstairs is jib, but the downstairs says isn't. Well in this case the inspector will need to see all of the jib or we need to do two inspections before we can plaster. Quite nickly, yeah. Then we're home and hosed. Pretty much at that point, if it's a real typical new build, we'll do a residential final. And that's when we walk around, we check like smoke alarms, hot water temperature, has the whole house been built to code? Have you passed all your inspections? Are all your memos in from everyone? Do you have your electrical certificate? Do you have your gas certificate? Etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And then we also check a bunch of things on the house. There's also a couple more. If you've got tile showers, you need to get a waterproof membrane. If you've got block walls, you need to get tanking. If you've got a swimming pool, you'll need to get that. If you've got a fireplace, you'll need to get that checked. It used to be that a building inspector was a previous builder. Nowadays, a lot of building inspectors have done a construction degree. That's great and they have a lot of knowledge. One downfall to that is often they're lacking the practical knowledge on site. So I always love an inspector who is firm but fair, someone who is consistent, and someone who has a practical knowledge of how building sites could work. But basically, that's it. And here's a list, and you can find it online, and it's not as scary as you think. And building inspectors aren't as scary as you think. And next time you're there, just have a yarn to them. They're not there to rip your job to shreds. They're there to tick a bunch of boxes to remove the liability from the council. So if you understand that and you work with them, they will work with you and you both get what you need out of the situation. <laughs>